Hey guys, it's Monica at Ac Academic Phoenix Plus, and hopefully you guys are doing well. In the last tutorial, we did a little bit of UV mapping and uh, basic texturing with an emission map to create this glow of the blade and also these uh, kind of <laughs> random but fun details on it. Definitely not as graceful as the blade in the back, but hopefully you got the idea of how to create it. You're more than welcome to recreate this and have some fun with the blade. I might go in and fix it, but in the meanwhile, let's go ahead and I'm gonna unlock this and hide. So press zero to hide it or control H. And let's make a turntable. So I'm gonna grab everything but the lights and I'm going to group it, control G, center the pivot. And it's really up to you how you wanna show off the blade. You might wanna show off the blade if you want to like this. Some people would probably wanna show it off lying down. Oops, I missed the detail. Uh, let me grab this middle mouse and drag it into the group. This is going to be sword group. Now guys, I did not label everything here. That is my bad. I need to go in and relabel it. So make sure that you label everything. All right, grab this group. I'm going to, I think it'll look cooler if I was rotating it 90 degrees. It's always a good idea to have a base so it doesn't look like it's floating in the air. So I'm going to go ahead and create a very basic base. I'm going to increase my subdivisions because I want this to be nice and smooth. And I also want to increase my subdivision height so that I can um, grab these edges. Just kind of bring them out. Again, it's a small detail, but the it's always important to have some nice quality render when you guys are creating this. Now it's up to you what you guys want to add into your base. I don't recommend to just leave it plain. I would probably put some sort of standard AI standard surface there. This is going to be my base shader. Uh, you probably want to go a little neutral, just something that helps emphasize your, uh, your scene. Uh, I'm going to bring up the metalness a little bit, probably the roughness. Uh, let's take a look at what that looks like so far. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. I find this kind of distracting, so I'm just going to go ahead and go back to the large blade body, but keep the other one. So um, I think that looks a lot nicer than what I had. So uh, I'm going to keep it this way. All right, uh, let's make this bigger. I'm going to make this wider. And I'm also going to grab some of these faces here. And again, this is really, really rough. I'm kind of just, uh, just kind of, assign a new material. I just want to make sure that it looks nice and it looks professional, but at the same time, I also don't want it to look like it's like I didn't spend any time on it. So, okay. Uh, let me go back to this new one. This is base shader two. Uh, I'm going to increase the roughness so it's not so shiny. pick a color, maybe something a little bit more that matches the environment that kind of emphasizes the blade. Actually, what I'm going to do is assign the base shader and then I am going to grab these faces and I'm going to stop because my render is taking forever. And I'm going to assign the glowing material, which is my blue emission. And that looks pretty cool. It's a little thick. Again, I don't want it to distract for my piece, so I'm just going to bring it up a little bit, and then I'm going to grab these guys and bring it up too. So something like that. Let's see what that looks like. So that's kind of nice. It's not distracting. I could choose a darker color for a base shader, so I'm going to go ahead and darken it up a little bit. Um, again, the focus is supposed to be on the blade, not on here. Uh, increase the roughness a little more. Maybe play with the IOR just because I really enjoy getting like some interesting highlights on this. All right. Okay, so let's look at, the first thing we need to make sure is that we have our object in the center. So usually what I do is select the sword, shift select the base. So let's call this base geo just because it's here. So I'm going to select a group, shift select the base, press F, and then zoom in. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure I have these two things selected. I am going to go under 
generate. I'm going to go to help and go to my find menu. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because I know that there's this thing called a turntable and there's so many options, I forget where it is. So under animation, I can go to visualize, create turntable. Perfect. That's why I love that help menu. Uh, let's go to animation. We're going to go to visualize, create turntable, go to the options. And it's going to ask you if how many frames do you want? So let's say 100 frames. And it's up to you if you want to go clockwise or counterclockwise. And then I'm going to click on turntable. So what it does is that it creates a new camera called turntable. It creates a group called group one and there's a camera under it. So if I scroll through here, you're going to see, whoops, I better press play. And let me do, let's do real time. And you can see that I can actually go through and it does a turntable, which is really nice. But you'll also notice, oh, my computer is having a really hard time. Um, you can also do a play blast if you just want to see what it looks like. Play blast, you can go to the options. Uh, this is the view. I'm not saving it. So there we go. Do a play blast. Does it really fast? And then you can kind of see the, the turntable, how the camera is going to look. Now, this is important because I just want to make sure that nothing gets cut off. Like, did the edge get cut off? No, actually, it's pretty safe there. It's actually pretty in good place. Now, if I press play, you'll notice that it kind of slows down and then it accelerates, right? So I don't really want that. I actually want it to be pretty, pretty even. It's a, it's not a organic motion. It's a, I want it to be like linear. So we're going to go to Windows, General Editors, um, Animation Editors, go to the Graph Editor, make sure that you have your group selected, grab these keys, and then just flatten it. So now when I press play, if this thing played, there we go, you can see that the, the motion is pretty, pretty even. Awesome. So you can render it. Let's get rid of that background. So I'm going to grab my Sky Dome. I'm going to go to my Physical Sky. Go to your AI Sky Dome, scroll down until you see visibility and turn that off. So what you're going to get is you're still going to keep that lighting, but at least now the background is not so distracting. And then in After Effects or in Photoshop, I can actually change the background because there's an alpha map, which is really helpful. Let me go to this blade. Uh, I'm going to increase the metalness if that did anything cooler. I'm going to grab that. Sorry, it's uh, I'm always going to be picking on this forever. Let's go ahead and I'm going to decrease the metalness so it's not so shiny. Maybe increase the roughness. I really just want the focus. I don't want to see too much information here. I really want the focus to be up here. And sometimes if it's too reflective or too pretty, people end up looking at this instead of at the blade. So I just want to make sure I'm, I don't have that effect. So I'm going to increase my diffuse. I'm going to continue. I'm going to lower the an anisotropy. This shouldn't be anything too fancy. It's just there to make it look nice and maybe darken this part further. There we go. So now I have a nice contrast. This is dark. It's got a little detail. We got that and you guys can render it from there. All right. Uh, let's render. So under render settings, under our render settings over here, uh, we probably want to label it something. At this time, I'm just going to call it um, Fantasy Sword. It's up to you what you want to call it. Let's go ahead and change this into a TIFF. I'm going to say None. And over here, under Frame Animation Extension, let's go to Frame Number Extension because we actually need 100 frames. I'm going to lower this here to 3. Uh, this is just the frame padding, so I just want to kind of keep it at three. I don't have a thousand frames. I only have a hundred. Start frame is one end frame is a hundred. Notice that I have two cameras. I just wanted to render the turntable. Um, right now it's at HD 540, which is fine for an exercise. Is this, if this was for your portfolio or your demo reel, I would go to HD 1080. 540 is good for this particular time just because I needed to render quickly. But if I wanted to put this in my portfolio demo reel, I would definitely make sure that you render really high quality. Let's go to our Arnold renderer. Right now we have a lot of noise. So if I try to render this out, it's pretty noisy and I want to make sure it's the highest quality possible. So I'm going to increase this to four and then I'm going to increase the fuse specular. I don't have transmission, so I don't have to worry about that. I don't have subsurface. I don't have fog. 
but I am going to in in enable the adaptive sampling and cr increase this to, let's say, like a six so that it goes from four to six whenever it needs it. Uh, my dome is OK right now. Uh, I didn't spend too much time on making it picking like a nice color, but it shows it off fairly well. So I'm actually OK with it. Um, there's a whole you guys can take a look at my videos when it comes to lighting. Just you can change your dome color. You can change the texture and just really push it further or you can even do like um, a studio lighting. So I have a bunch of tutorials about lighting, but I'm going to go ahead and move on. I do want to increase my samples so that it renders nicer. All right, I think I'm in a good place. This is going to take a little bit of time to render. So I am going to go ahead and uh, pause, but just one last step, double check to make sure you know where this is heading. Mine is gonna head to sword and then it's gonna go to images, right? So if I want this to go to a folder, I recommend that you call this like render and then put a back, whoops, um, that you put a slash between it so that it creates a folder and then it creates uh, every render is going to be called fantasy soar 001 002 da, 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 da. all right so next the final step let's go to rendering render render sequence now this is an opportunity for you to just go ahead and walk away i do not recommend that you do that what i would recommend is that you go into your images and make sure it's working. So for example, you can see in my images that I have my render and my fantasy sword is being rendered in the computer locally, but I notice how nice the quality is now. The noise shouldn't be too bad. Mm, still a little noisy, but um, I just wanna double check to make sure that this is in fact rendering. So I can see that it's under images, it's under render, and it's rendering Fantasy Sword 001, and then it should do 002. So I always recommend that you just kind of watch and see to make sure everything's going to be okay, because otherwise you guys are just going to walk away, and then there's all of these errors, things have gone terribly wrong, and then you have a big problem. So um, then you got to re-render, which you might not have enough time for. So just double check to make sure the render is actually happening. There it is. I can double click on it. I can see that it's working. The background is transparent. I can see the sword. Everything's looking good. Now I am going to come back to make sure it's rendering in the correct camera because sometimes it doesn't. Welcome to Maya. Um, but just make sure that you are rendering your turntable. All right, guys, I am going to press pause and I'm going to let this thing render. And I will be right for you. I'll be right back for me. It'll be a little bit. So, all right, I'll be right. All right. It finally is done after what feels like fraction of a second for you. My renders are done. If I take a look at my images and then I take a look at the render folder, you'll see that I have a hundred renders. Perfect. And if I double click on this and start scrolling, you'll notice that I can, I've got an animation. So that's perfect. All right. Let's bring this in into after effects. Let's go to file. We're going to go to import, import file. Since I'm here, might as well copy this, paste this here. And I really just need to select 001 and click on import. It's going to ask me, what do I want? I'm going to click that. Okay. Here is the animation. Just drag this down to the timeline. And now you have your animation. Press play and you can see how this is going. It's looking pretty nice. Perfect. Now, if you want to, you can add a background and all sorts of elements, but I'm just going to go ahead and export it add as is. So file, I personally like to use uh, media encoder. So file export, add to Adobe encoder Q. This is going to open up media encoder. Give it a second while it thinks really hard. Up here at the top, we have H.264, which is the default. I personally am going to keep it at medium bitrate. This is where you can find a place to save it. I'm going to go ahead and place it in my renders. So under images, there's actually in your folder swords, there is movies. So if you want to place it there, that might actually be a good place to put it. I'm going to put my fantasy sword right here and then press play. You're going to see a nice little preview right here. No audio. Oh, there he goes. Super fast. Let's go to sword. Let's go to movies and voila. I'm using, um, what's it called? Keyframe, which is a free uh, player. So that's why when it's free, it keeps giving me that warning. 
Uh, press spacebar, and there you go. You can use VLC or whatever, it doesn't matter. And this is how we create a turntable for your sword. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions by leaving a message below. Um, hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, we learned how to create turntables, how to render, all that fancy stuff. So at the end, you get a nice looking blade. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time with me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like, and of course, click the little bell and share my videos. It would be really helpful if you could share my videos with others. That always encourages me to uh, to make more when I see my subscriber list grow. So, And also take a look at um, academicphoenixplus.com. You can find free downloads, free tutorials, free trainings, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.